probably the first thing I do each day is just have a moment of thankfulness and gratitude. I mean, I have been trying to do, I've been trying to be an opera singer for 23 years. And I still marvel that, that I have been given this gift and this opportunity to sing for a living. I get paid to sing. What could be better than that? I'm so fortunate. I'm so blessed. So every day I sort of pinch myself and say, how lucky am I to get to be here and get to be taken on a roll like Ahab? Are you kidding? This is so good. And I'm so blessed. And, you know, I think there's a, con a common denominator for all singers, and that is we are concerned about our health. You know, we all want the opportunity to do our best. That's the main thing is, you know, how's my throat? You know, the how's the barometric pressure? How's the, you know, the allergies? How was the, it, you know, was I dry? Did I have a glass of wine last night and now I'm all dry? We, we all are concerned with our health because we want to do our best. So especially when it gets comes to performance time. We all do our little vocal checks and make sure that we're healthy and ready to go. And so far, I'm ready to go. Looking forward to it. If you can believe this, when I was 19 in Waco, Texas, I read Moby Dick. And I actually wrote a paper on Captain Ahab. So, you know, to be sitting here in this dressing room playing this role tonight all these years later, is crazy. It was 30 years ago. 30 years ago I was drawn to Ahab and I still am tonight. You know, the, what excites me, you know, in a minute I am going to put on his, his outfit and I'm going to put on that hat and I'm going to step into that leg and, you know, the, the doors that are open to an actor when you play a, a you know a literary character of such, you know, it's the rage, it's the insanity, it's the physical agony that I get to step into. It's the heartbreak and and being torn, you know, with with you know my single-minded pursuit of of killing this beast and being torn with the fact that you know I have a wife and a child at home, and so it's incredible to get to play this kind, this incredible wide scope of emotions and and also the charisma and the charm that a guy that leads other men willingly to their deaths, you know, to step into that leg and to step into that kind of power and, and charisma, it's great, it's thrilling. You know, after opening night, that's the one question that everybody asks me. How was it? How, you know, is it, does it hurt? Is it uncomfortable? I got to tell you, I have sort of, I have made my peace with the peg leg. He and I are one. <laughs> and, you know, it's an asset. It's part, it enhances the character. It, it enhances the pain. I cannot tell you what it's like to be up in that cage swinging in the wind, on one leg, singing this music that is, is filled with such passion and rage. It's so fun. It's so fun. And in all honesty, I'd prepared myself the, the couple of months before I came here. I knew it was going to hurt. You know, you sign up for Ahab, you know you're going to be walking around on a peg leg all night. So I, I knew that I needed to be smart and I needed to prepare myself well. And uh, I prepared myself for a lot of pain and aches that really so far have not come. So far, I'm, I'm happy to say that, you know, it's part of it and I have not suffered too mightily for it. You know, I met Jake probably 10, maybe 12 years ago when he wrote Dead Man Walking. I was in that world premiere production. So I've known him for a long time. I'll tell you what's amazing about having Jake around is how much he has grown and how much he's changed. Not only as a composer, I mean, everybody that comes to this, I think there is a unanimous consent that this is special. And it's it's a piece that is gonna have legs and it's gonna, it's gonna be around for a long time. But Jake has also changed so much as a man. That's the self-confidence. He's so smart. He's so intelligent. And that's obviously reflected in his music. 
but it's also very strongly reflected in having his presence around with us. We want to please him, you know, and we have wanted, even before he got here, there's like this unspoken covenant that we have all shared. It's like this in, intangible, no, the, uh, a tangible presence in the room with us. We want to get it right. We want to please him. And these parts are so complex you know, a lot of the time, I'll tell you, you know, singing Ahab probably 80% of the time is pure joy. It's, it's a pleasure. And I'm just like surfing on, you know, this wave of sound or, or from, that the orchestra is making or these, these great melody lines that Jake has written. But a lot of the times I have to really concentrate. We all do. We've all got to really concentrate and be our sharpest. And uh, because it's hard, this is a, it's a difficult, complex piece. And, you know, we want to get the pitches right and we want to get the rhythms right. And we want, you know, we're, we're trying to act, too. We want to be inspiring and be there for our colleagues. And so it's a big ball of uh, expectation and not pressure, but responsibility that we have all shared that we want to make Jake proud. We want to make Lenny proud and Tim proud and everybody that's involved in this. We really want to do our best and having the composer in the room with us, he's inspiring. He is, he makes us all want to do our best. And that's the feeling that, that I think we have shared is that he wants us to do our very best. And it's good. It's good. Uh, it's good when you, you've got that kind of support underneath you.